RoboQuest has tons and tons of weapons, but they're certainly not all made equal. Some get me giddy like a chimp seeing a fresh yellow banana hanging from a tree, and some get me upset, like going on Twitter. <laughs> so today we're going to be ranking all 73 weapons in RoboQuest, but first let's set the groundwork for this. Here are my credentials. I have beaten every difficulty in the game with at least an A rank, including Guardian 4. I've also beaten the game with just the starter pistol, the shovel, and the buddy bot respectively, and you can check those videos out if you want. Here's how the tiers are going to go. Our top tier is an always take. Every time I see this weapon, no matter the ad fixes, I'm going to take it because I know it can probably win me the run. The tier below that is these weapons are good. Most of the time I'll take them, but they're even better if they have some good affixes, but they don't necessarily need great affixes in order to be good during the run. Below that, we have our mid-tier weapons. Uh, these are heavily carried by items, perks, and affixes. Uh, so if I see it, I'll check the affixes, but if the affixes aren't great, I'm probably not gonna take it. Second to last, we have dropping ASAP. If I see this in Canyon, I'll take it. You know, it's an okay gun, but if I see pretty much anything else, I'm gonna take that instead. And at the very, very bottom, we have never taking. There's not a ton of guns in this category, but if I see these, I'm never going to bother with them. It would take a really insane run to make these work, and at that point, you probably already won the run anyway, so picking these up would not help you at all. And lastly, before we get into it, these weapons are not sorted in their individual tiers. All right, let's get into it. The Junk Arquebus. Uh, I think the Junk Arquebus is fine. Uh, I'll definitely read its affixes if I find it. It has some potential in Canyon, and especially Act 2, depending on... Uh, where you decide to go, but I'm not 100% sure if I would keep it past then. Next up, we have the, the Cobra 50. Uh, I think the Cobra 50 is fine as well. Uh, I'm not going to be dropping it ASAP, but I'm, I'm a little hesitant to pick it up. It does a lot of damage early game, but if you get into city with a Cobra, it's probably fantastic quality. It has some insane affixes or your build's just cracked, so... The, the Valkyrie, all of, so all of the rifles of this game, spoiler alert, kind of have the same issue where they have a pretty low base damage. I'm not, like, dropping it as soon as I can because it has potential, but the damage output is not super high. Uh, the Valkyrie rifle doesn't always do it for me. So, the Kangaroo Sentry has kind of a unique quality to it that only one other weapon I believe has where it can actively draw aggro away from you. And that is fantastic. That is one of the only ways I've found to beat Guardian 4, is to be able to draw aggro away from you. The problem is that the Kangaroo Sentry, whenever you use its ability to set down a, a, a Sentry, it doesn't have enough health to draw aggro from you long enough to really make a difference. Uh, but it also doesn't do a whole lot of damage unless you already have an insane build or it, it's fantastic. So. I'm really, I'll pick it up if I don't have anything else, but if I find anything above this, I'm pretty much going to drop it as soon as I can. The Raptor SMG is kind of in the same spot. I've had builds where the Raptor SMG was good, but I've never had a build where the Raptor SMG was great. Sure, if you get the affix where it has a shotgun every like two or three blasts, like that's good, but it's not good for long. Once you get into city, this thing falls off a cliff. It's really, really not great. So the Meteor Cannon is one I haven't used a ton. Um, it's pretty slow. Uh, I'll read its affixes. I think it has potential if it has really good affixes, especially if it can bounce or ricochet. Um, if you have a really good elemental build going, this will be really good, but I would be surprised if this thing could carry you all the way to the moon. Hey y'all. So while recording the tier list, I actually got a couple of the weapons mixed up. The potato is an explosive crank gun. It's pretty good, but like a lot of the other explosive weapons, it is kind of middle of the road. So we're going to put it in mid tier. I will fix the mistake later down the line. It's going to be in a tier for a while, but I will fix it. So don't worry. Uh, the Sonic Crossbow is in the same boat as most of the other uh, weapons uh, in the tier list so far. Uh, it's pretty good early game. It does some pretty good damage, but the problem with the Sonic Crossbow is that Falls off pretty fast unless you have really, really good items and perks. Uh, I'm never taking the Cosmo gun. This thing's a pea shooter. This thing is worthless. I've never gotten it to work. It barely does any damage in Canyon. This thing sucks complete ass, and I'm never picking it up. I'd rather have the Fox gun. I think the Typhoon minigun is kind of in the same boat as most of the other weapons we've talked about so far. Uh, the Typhoon minigun is 
absolutely bonkers if it has the affixes of one of the three elements uh because it has such a high fire rate it can inflict status effects really quickly uh and really efficiently but if you don't have a good elemental build uh you're probably not really going to be able to find a place for it in your build but it can do you well until you find something that is going to complement your build next we have the ionic palms i think the ionic palms kind of have the same problem as the raptor smg uh they don't do a lot of damage their damage fall off is pretty heavy but it's hard to find the perks and the affixes to actually enable this gun to do well, even above standard. I mean, it is really like hard to even get it to work in standard, and most things work in standard. So next up is the Hurricane Rifle. Uh, I think the Hurricane Rifle is pretty good. I think it's uh, the first one that I'm kind of torn between putting it in, uh, in tiers. Um, if I see this, I'm pretty excited for it. I try to lean towards... Uh, I try to lean towards more elemental centric builds but this weapon can do that super well and it has higher base damage and it doesn't give you the heavy uh movement penalty that the minigun does a lot of the times i will take it over something else we're gonna say it's a low really good tier a low a tier uh but without if if it has like even middling affixes and i don't have good perks it's probably not going to be a pickup now if we want to talk about a gun that is not middling in a tier uh the orbital shotgun is fantastic uh the orbital shotgun has a high fire rate a high likelihood that from what i've seen to have a elemental status on it uh it has a high clip size it has bounce it has a big buckshot that spreads over a large area to apply those elemental effects I think the orbital shotgun is great and if you have a build for it this thing will carry you through the whole run so like most of the smgs we've talked about so far the quasar smg just doesn't have the damage to justify taking it and carrying it through the rest of the game uh, i can almost never find a, a situation where uh having the quasar smg is like oh, i wish i had the quasar smg right now uh i'd rather just have something else with a higher rate of fire and more base damage because things like the orbital shotgun, the fact that they have bounce is extremely advantageous because it's a shotgun, it's firing so many uh, bullets at once, but the Quasar SMG doesn't fire enough bullets to actually be able to uh, justifiably take it for just the bounce effect. Uh, the Ionic Sniper. I think the Ionic Sniper is fine. A lot of the times the affixes are like middling on it. It does a high amount of base damage for a while. Uh, now that I think about it, I'm actually going to drop it down to like dropping as soon as I can. Uh, even with good affixes, it's kind of mid. Uh, its fire rate's pretty low. Uh, it, even with weak spot damage, even with critical damage, uh, there's so many ways in this game to mitigate the need to hit weak spots that things like sniper rifles are typically not great. You're going to want things with a higher fire rate more. You'll kind of see that trend as we move further on in the list. So the Blunderbuzz is actually, for me, the first one that we're going to put in the take every single time tier. Uh, every time I see the Blunderbuzz, even if it has like mid affixes i can almost guarantee me that it's going to be doing me well for a long long time gorilla bolter i think the gorilla bolter is good uh, a lot of the times explosive weapons in this game suffer a lot because explosive damage is fine but explosive damage just suffers uh, a lot of fall off elemental damage is always going to shadow over uh explosive damage uh, but the Gorilla Bolter is good in the fact that it's high single target. It's good at handling trash mobs. You might not take it to the moon, but you are going to carry it for a long time if you can find one uh, with like decent affixes. Buddy Bot. Little Buddy Bot. So the starting weapons are honestly kind of a weird one to talk about. If you take the starting weapons to the Oasis and you upgrade them to Fantastic, uh, you can win the game with them single-handedly. I've done so. I You can go watch my videos on how I did it. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it was always good. Anything above hard, you were going to be hard pressed to win, uh, which is honestly why most of the starting weapons are going to be put in dropping as soon as possible. Shredder. I'm never taking the shredder. So there are only a couple weapons in this game that have this problem. You don't want to get close in this game. Uh, the weapons that have you get close want to incentivize you to get close by offering healing cells in return. But the amount of damage you're gonna be taking at higher difficulties is never, ever, ever going to trade to the amount of healing cells. Uh, you are always going to come out negative and it makes the melee weapons all, like almost never worth taking. Next up, we have the Beluga Cannon. 
So the Beluga Cannon is pretty mid-tier. I think the Beluga Cannon has potential early game. Uh, if you can get a Beluga Cannon with like hit scan, so the uh, projectiles automatically appear where you're aiming, that's pretty good for a while. Uh, once you get to city, unless you have an absolutely cracked build, Beluga Cannon is almost never going to stay with you in the long term. There's almost always going to be a better um, elemental applier and AoE damage dealer either in your inherent abilities as the character you're playing or the weapons you're finding along the way. So the Beluga Cannon almost never finds like a solid good niche uh, in any of the builds that I've had. The Arctic Rifle is good. If I see it early, like early game, I'm probably going to take it. If I see it later game, I'm probably not going to take it. Uh, early game, this can wipe out those early waves of trash mobs so easily. It's really not even a problem. Once you get later in the game, uh, if you can get multiple status effects appliers on one Arctic rifle, it can be really good because it does have the kind of split shot inherent on itself, but it is hard to make work super long term, but I want it. Like I, if I see it early game, I'm going to want it. But like uh, the Cyclone rifle kind of has the same problem as the rest of the rifles. Uh, it's big draw is slower fire rate, um, more accuracy. It's almost a little too vanilla, which is a problem a lot of the rifles have. The fact that they are too vanilla. They don't have enough oomph to back the fact that they have not a lot going on for them, even with a lot of crazy affixes. So we're actually going to do something special for this. We're going to add a row above. We're adding the dual Hellions to their own tier. In my humble opinion, the dual Hellions are the best gun in the game, and it is like not even close the dual hellions have an extremely high fire rate the dual hellions have extremely high base damage the dual hellions have uh, an increased capacity to apply elemental effects because you are uh, shooting so fast and you're doing a whole lot of damage they also have an extremely high magazine capacity uh, they also have a very high critical uh multiplier the dual hellions can carry if you find a blank pair of dual hellions in the early game and you just upgrade it as you go you'll at least make it to city, if not make it to moon off of just a pair of blank dual Hellions. If I find them, I will always take them no matter what else I have, no matter what is in my build, because I know that it can take me all the way to the moon every single time, almost guaranteed. All right, dual stingers. I think the dual stingers are fine. Uh, I think the dual stingers with good affixes are pretty crazy, actually, because of how high their attack speed is. They have pretty good base damage. They have pretty good... Uh, they actually have a two times critical hit multiplier, which is kind of kind of crazy. Uh, so with the right affixes, these are insane. But without good affixes, these suck complete dick. So I, I'm always checking the affixes. Uh, dual Vipers, low base damage, not a high enough fire rate, low. Uh, they have a low crit multiplier. I'm almost never taking these, but I will take them sometimes if I'm kind of looking for something better. Uh, I think the dual LMGs are great. I think the dual LMGs uh, are great for a lot of reasons. They have a high magazine capacity. Uh, they have a high fire rate, so they're good at applying elemental effects. Uh, if they, they're even in their, their run carrying with the right uh, affixes, and I think that uh, if you see them, you're almost always going to want them. Uh, but sometimes, you know, your build is more focused on like if you're playing as the recon class. Sometimes you're going to want not to just come out and shoot one little. Uh, one little bullet in order to kind of initiate the fight again. Uh, the dual sawdoffs are definitely better than the dual LMGs, but I probably take them at about the same rate. The dual sawdoffs with the right affixes are bonkers. They are insanely bonkers. Uh, they do a, a huge amount of damage. You can fire them extremely fast with the right perks. Uh, they have, I'm pretty sure they have a pretty high magazine capacity. They have eight. They also don't have a uh, super high effective range, but it's close enough to where you can go in and apply fire. You can go in and apply your chain lightning and things like that. So I think the dual sawed offs are, are pretty damn good. Dual, the dual rascals? No, I'm never taking these dual rascals. Even with, uh, I'm almost never taking the dual rascals. They're the same as the dual vipers, but the, the, like these are interchangeable. They're basically the same gun to me. Uh, the dual boomsticks, I can't justifiably take the dual boomsticks. I, explosive damage just kind of sucks. Uh, explosive damage... I want to make work, but it only works sometimes. You have to have them marked. You have to have an elemental effect with it. You have to have this. It's so hard to get a ramping 
explosive build going and I, it's almost never worth it i'll pick these up for a while and then i'll find something above them and take that instead the dual uzis uh, are actually a little better than the dual vipers or the dual rascals because they fire so much faster that you can have a lot of the affixes that heck, every two shots fire three shots and then you have uh, a perk that lets you have all of your weapon damage be fire damage you're applying a ton of fire damage uh, so the fact that their fire rate is so damn high with the right perks and affixes these gr are great but sometimes they are pea shooters that you're just not gonna want to pick up mantis crossbow i can't say i've played too much with it things that fire slow are almost never good and the fact that this does fire so damn slow like sure it does uh it does have a decently high critical hit multiplier but guess what has a higher critical hit multiplier the dual stingers like why would i take the mantis crossbow over the dual stingers like i understand there's a niche for it but it's not uh, a niche that i am particularly keen on ever filling in my games shark sniper same thing i'll pick it up in canyon no wait no i'm never taking this you can't pick this up in canyon uh you cannot actually find the shark sniper until act two and by act two i will have found anything above this it doesn't do enough damage uh it like wants you to use a scope Notably, if any of these want you to use a scope, they are automatically not very good because the problem with the scope is you're not moving. If you're not moving, you're dying. If you're not moving in RoboQuest, moving around like a schizo freak on crack cocaine, you are going to die in the next five seconds. You have to be dodging constantly, even if there's nothing going on. So them wanting you to use a scope is never going to work for you. God, the igniter gun. I'm never taking this. Uh, the igniter gun, you can take in Act 1 and it still sucks complete ass. Uh, I understand the gimmick is to apply burn. I get that. I don't care about that because this next gun is even better. <laughs> the volcano rifle. I'm, I love the volcano rifle. If I, t if I see this in act two or act one, I'm going to take it so fast. It is insanely good at dispatching trash mobs in early acts. It has a high fire rate. It has good synergy with a lot of the perks and it's an awesome gun, but I'm not going to take it every single time because I'm not going to be building around like that every single time and now the flak cannon is one that i'm probably going to be taking every single time the flak cannon has a high fire rate so that's something we've talked about a lot high fire rate's good it has bounce another reason we like the blunderbuzz it has a high magazine count it doesn't have a crit multiplier but you're not using this thing to fight a boss even though you totally can't you're using this thing to walk into a room shoot it eight times and everything's dead face down on the floor this thing sweeps rooms. The flat cannon is insanely good. Do we have to talk about the flare gun? Like, are you going to make me talk about the flare gun? I will, because I know if I don't and someone gets all pissy in the comments, I won't have uh, the means to refer back to myself. The flare gun has one niche, and that is to apply marked. And marked is incredible. Marked is awesome. But do you know how many classes can apply marked? you know how many affixes can give you the alt fire to apply marked too many for the flare gun to ever even have the audacity to show itself before me i will never ever 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 pick up the flare gun ever in my life even if i only have the fox gun i will never pick up the flare gun. grandma's shotgun grandma's shotgun is really good just like a lot of the other shotguns in the game high fire rate high mag count high effective range grandma's shotgun is just good to have I'm not always going to pick it up but I'm pretty excited when I see it because I know it's um, probably going to do me good for a while. The Comet Cannon is fine. The Comet Cannon is good early on to take care of trash mobs. But at the same time, it's the arcing projectile makes it kind of a pain in the ass. There are a lot of flying enemies in this game and trying to hit them with an arcing projectile makes you want to peel all the skin off your body. So you're just never... Taking this kind of ensures that you have a better weapon in your offhand. And if you don't, this one is going to be a problem because the arcing projectile does make it kind of a pain in the ass to use. The Kaboom Grenade sucks. Any questions? Watch the footage right now. Thank you for visiting my presentation. We're going to move on. The Fox Gun. I want to put it in the same tier as Buddy Bot. Uh, the Fox Gun upgraded is uh, pretty damn good. You have to have a build around it but I'm never going to keep it because I don't want the Fox gun. <laughs> I don't want to keep the Fox gun. It It's like, I know it has like, oh, but it has 
it has sidekick where it reloads your off. I don't give a shit about that. I'm going to switch to my dual hellions. Oh, I'm out of ammo. I'm going to switch my blunderbutt. Like, I'm not going to be able, like, oh, I'm going to re Like, I'm not doing that. We're not, it's not happening. I'm going to have two good guns instead of one good gun and something mediocre. The junk beam. The junk beam has a very particular niche. If you want a gun that fires extremely quickly to kind of uh, synergize off of your perks and your items, the junk beam is great. But other than that, the junk beam is not great. Uh, as we'll discuss in the next weapon, as we'll discuss in the next weapon, which I guess we can go ahead and move on to, guns that do exclusively dot damage, da damage over time damage, are not good. If I shoot an enemy, I need that enemy to die. If that enemy doesn't die, I'm taking my eyes off of that enemy, and he's going to shoot me in my ass. And there goes 30 health that I'm going to have a hard time getting back. The Kramer doesn't do... It barely, to say it does damage is to like be disingenuous. It does fire damage over time, but its main attack doesn't do any damage. You have to wait for the fire to kill them. I need them to be dead. So this next one might be kind of a shock. What? So damage over time damage isn't good why are you taking the razor launcher i'm taking the razor launcher because this thing is a boss killer this thing destroys bosses you keep this so that when you run up on uh the boss at the end of act two or the end of act three uh you shoot them eight times the razors stack it's not like oh i shoot one razor and then it does damage. I shoot another one and then it does its damage. No, you shoot them with eight razors and those razors stack over time. And that boss's health bar just plummets because the razor launcher does an insane amount of damage. And if you have auto critical damage, it's even better because it just ting 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 like it it's it's crazy. Pick it up. If you find it, please pick it up. It doesn't even need great uh it doesn't even need great affixes to pick it up. Uh the Rhino LMG is pretty good. If I see it, I'm probably gonna take it uh later in the game if you don't have the right affixes it can kind of become a pea shooter uh if you're not careful but it it kind of uh fills the same niche as the dual lmgs uh even though uh the rhino lmg i wouldn't say is as good if i find it instead of the dual lmgs i'm not going to complain if i'm looking for something like that the hornet bow if i find it in canyon i'll take it but i'm immediately going to drop it if i find something else uh it's draw it, it, it shoots too damn slow even as even with fantastic, I bet you this gun, I bet you this weapon would suck. Uh, it, it it would need every affix in the game to be good. All right. Next up, we have the Lynx rifle. Uh, the Lynx rifle is fine. It has a high enough fire rate to kind of mitigate the fact that they want you to use the scope, but it doesn't do enough damage later in the game, nor does it fire fast enough in order to ever really fill any sort of significant niche in the game. I mean, for all intents and purposes, the Vulture Rifle is the same uh, way as the rest of the rifles. Uh, not, it's too vanilla. It doesn't do anything special. It doesn't have anything that wows me to the point where I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm excited to pick this up. It has a unique gimmick or it has something special. Uh, it just is not very good. I and mean, you can treat all the rifles the same, to be completely honest. I can't justifiably put the Ram shotgun in the same category as the Petrator or the Dual Sawed-Offs or Grandma shotgun. Uh, so I'm going to drop it down a tier. Uh, this shotgun, it's a good early game shotgun. If you find this in Canyon, if you find this in uh, the Quarry, you're not going to be upset but you are going to be feeling that it doesn't do a ton of damage unless it has very good affixes. I'm never taking the mine launcher. Uh, it's, a, it's a weird weapon. It's clunky to use. I just don't ever really care to find this. Uh, I've never been excited to find a mine launcher, except for when I was trying to get footage for this video. Uh, the Mammoth Minigun. The Mammoth Minigun is a lot of the time quite good. If you have even relatively mediocre perks, the Mammoth Minigun is very good. Uh... If it has good affixes, it's even better. Uh, it's not a one, it's not a uh, run winner, but it will win you a run if you kind of uh, try to steer your build towards it because it has so much ammo. It shoots so fast. And the windmill rifle does the same thing. Uh, the ramp up on the windmill rifle and the ramp up on the minigun are great. Uh, the good thing about the windmill rifle is that it's just kind of more versatile. It reloads faster, but it doesn't have as much ammo. Uh, they kind of fill the same niche depending on your build you want one or the other uh, kind of depending on your class you want one or the other uh, so these are both great weapons the dragooner the gooner mortar the dragoon mortar the gooner mortar 
Before getting footage for this video, I was going to put it in never taking, but I will put it for posterity in dropping ASAP. I will do that because the reticle's weird, but it does shoot where you aim, relatively speaking. But the arcing projectile is very slow, it's very annoying, and I just don't want to deal with it. I'd rather take something else that I don't have to deal with, even if it does a little less damage. The power fists are cool. I think the power fists are very cool, but I think the power fists are something I'm never going to take. It has the same problem as the shredder, that I don't want to go in to get hit. I'm never going to get that health back. <laughs> like, I'm never going to have a good trade-off, so I'm just not going to... Like, I'm just not going to take these. I just can't take these. So the Pulsar Rifle is interesting. It does explosive damage. It does delayed explosive damage. It shoots very quickly in three round bursts. I want it to be good. I want this weapon to be good, but it's really hard to find an application where it is. I have before, but it took a lot. It does have Seeker. I'm going to move it up. I'm going to move it up one. This thing guaranteed has homing projectiles. And if you, the less you have to aim, the better. So if you find this early, you're not going to get super excited. I'm going to be honest. You're not going to get super excited, but you'll be a little excited that you don't have to aim for a while. Uh, you can just focus on dodging. So it has its place. It has its place. This is the bull shotgun. Basically the same exact thing as the ram shotgun. It is a worse version of the rest of the shotguns. You find it early. Yippee. You find it early. Yippee. But you're not going to want to keep it for too long, if I'm being honest. The bandito gun. I'm not keeping it for long. It, it has a cool gimmick. It's a cool revolver. I get it. I think it's cool too, but I don't think it's very good. I think it's good early, but everything's good early. Hell, like the flare gun's good early, uh, but early is not the, kill, the key here. L later in the game, when you want to be consistent and not die the, in the first room in the city is where you want to be consistent. The bandito gun doesn't allow that. It doesn't do enough damage. You got, if it's fantastic, sure. But if most of the weapons on this list were fantastic quality, it would carry the run. The dart spitter is not bad. But it needs the right affixes and it needs the right perks. You need the right affixes and perks to make the dark better good. And a lot of the times you're not going to find that. So I'll read the affixes if they are good. And I will pick it up if they are. And I'll enjoy myself. But a lot of the time it's not going to have what I need. The torpedo rifle is fine. The torpedo rifle is great for crowd control. The torpedo rifle is great for killing little trash mobs. Uh, but it doesn't do great damage against bosses and it has the same downfall as the rest of the explosive weapons in that it's just not very good unfortunately uh but it's better than most it has a pretty high fire rate as a three round burst and it's been okay i've definitely used it and it's been okay but i've definitely never used it and it's been fantastic i really want the buffalo cannon to be good but it's not i'm i'm just never gonna take this if it did more damage, fired faster, had a bigger mag size, something, I don't know. It feels so bad to use. The explosion radius isn't big enough, so it can't hit like more than one mob at once. Explosion damage isn't very good already. I don't know. It just feels so bad to pick up the buffalo cannon and actually get it to work. I just can't manage it. I'm dropping the scout sniper as soon as I can, just like the rest of the rifles. It's too clunky and slow. I'm not aiming down my scope. You're never going to make me aim down my scope in this game. I'm going to die if I aim down my scope in this game. I will die if I aim down my scope. It's not happening. I'm never doing it, and you can't fucking make me. Junk rifle. It's a rifle just like the rest. Uh, it is middle of the road. It is fine. I'm sure it could carry you through standard, but anything higher than that, uh, you're going to struggle with for sure. Sheriff's carbine. I've had a Sheriff's Carbine carry me. I think I had a Sheriff's Carbine carry me through my Guardian 3 win, but that's only because it was fantastic. Uh, and other than that, the Sheriff's Carbine is fine. It does okay damage. It has a decent fire rate. It's based, for all intents and purposes, the Sheriff's Carbine is a rifle that is uh, semi automatic that does more damage. And it's fine. If I see it, I'm like, oh, cool. But then I read its affixes and they're not good. It's like, oh, well, I'm not going to take that. What are you, psychotic? I'm not going to take that. You stupid. The Voltaic Cannon. God almighty, I love this weapon. God almighty, the Voltaic Cannon is so good. It comes default with shock, which is incredible. It has, it's like a flak cannon, but faster, applies an elemental effect, and has a huge magazine. This thing clears out rooms. This thing will air that bitch out if you walk in with one of these. And the, like, it already starts great. But the more you can build on it, this thing could kill the final boss. You know what I mean? Like, this thing is incredible. You're, if you see this, you'll take it, no matter where you are. The Tesla rifle is very good. The Tesla rifle comes default with Ricochet. 
And more than that, it comes default with Ricochet and Shock. I'm moving it up. I get so fucking excited when I see this early in the game. It coming default with Ricochet and Shock, you are applying Shock to like six enemies at once? Are you fucking kidding me? That's insane. Applying Shock to that many enemies at once is wild. And you don't even have to get lucky. All you have to do is find it. You don't have to get lucky with the affixes. Anything more than default, great. I just don't take the shovel. And on second thought, I don't take Buddy Bot. The only one I take is Fox Gun because they non-consensually force me to take it. The shovel's not great in this for the same reason the rest of the melee weapons aren't great. I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to get my ass in there in the weeds because I'm going to die. I'm just going to die. I'm not doing I'm not doing it. The Splasher Rifle is a weird one. I'll admit, the Splasher Rifle is a strange one. The Splasher Rifle has good AoE. It's good at crowd control. But it's weird bullshit arcing projectiles are so annoying to actually get to hit anything. But if it has good affix, it's good for a while. This is a low mid tier. Okay. Forgive me. I messed I, I mixed up the potato with the sulfator shotgun. I'm just gonna move it down to here. It's pretty good. Now the sulfator shotgun, on the other hand, I, that's what I thought this was. This crank shotgun that I described earlier is phenomenal. It's incredible. I love the Sulfator Shotgun. The Sulfator Shotgun, 16 mag, warm up, wreck, heavy. It, even, it has a crit multiplier. It has a high effective range. It shoots like fucking crazy. The Sulfator Shotgun is incredible. It's not as good as the shotguns above it, of course. The Tomahawk, dropping as soon as possible. Same with the Kunai, uh, for basically the same reason. I understand what they're going for. You want me to throw the tomahawk? You want me to throw the kunai? It's going to be cool. It's going to bounce. I'm going to crit. I understand the concept. I have to reload after throwing four tomahawks. What are we talking about? Like, what are we talking about? Four tomahawks that do like, like a good amount of damage, but travel very slowly. I might miss. The kunai don't do shit for fucking damage. Like, like the kunai do nothing. The thing the kunai have going for them is a, is I think the highest crit multiplier in the game. A 3.75 times crit multiplier. But it doesn't really matter because their damage sucks ass. We got the Thumper. I like the Thumper. I like the Thumper a lot. I don't like it more than, you know, these weapons. Because it has an arcing explosive projectile. But this thing can clear out a room early game real fast. If I see this early game, I'm excited. If I see this late game, I'm not excited. I ignore it. <laughs> I don't care about it at all. But if I see it early in the game... All right. All right. So the Tommy gun is heavily reliant on good affixes because it comes default with pretty damn good affixes. It comes with buckshot. It has a huge mag. It fires very quickly and it has a 30% chance, I believe, to fire a shotgun blast. And if you have the right perks, that's incredible. But it is a pea shooter if you don't. Oh, man. Hot damn. This is the only single explosive weapon that's going in top tier. The elephant gun is the best of every world. It fires quickly. It has a huge explosion radius. It does big damage to trash mobs. This gun is the antithesis of the razor launcher. <clears throat> if the razor launcher exists to kill bosses, this exists to kill trash mobs. And it does a crazy good job at it. This gun is awesome. If I see it, I take it early game. If I see it, I probably take it late game. If I'm late game, I probably have a good enough build to justify taking this. Our very last weapon, the behemoth shotgun. And we're going out on a great note. If I see the behemoth shotgun, I take the behemoth shotgun. The behemoth shotgun, if you didn't know, has the unique perk of refund. I don't know if there's a single weapon in the game that has refund other than the behemoth shotgun. No, the behemoth shotgun is the only gun in the game that default comes with refund. If you didn't know, refund on killing an enemy gives you all the ammo in your clip back. All of it. If you're playing as the Guardian, you have the infinite ammo bastion perk. You can just fire this thing off for six seconds at a time. That's crazy. That's insane at any point in the game. I think our tier list has a pretty good bell curve. Uh, I think the game has a a higher tendency to have less than average weapons, but that doesn't mean you couldn't win the game with any of these weapons, except for the weapons like the Cosmo gun, because that thing sucks ass and it pisses me off just looking at it. This is my tier list of all of the guns in RoboQuest. 
I hope you all enjoyed that video. Leave a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.